Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. If this is your first time, let me give you a quick rundown on what we're all about. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we build fun and inexpensive focused Commander decks. A focused Commander deck is more tuned than a casual deck, but not quite to the level of a competitive or optimized deck. Commander's Quarters decks are built on a $25 budget. That's $25 for 100 cards. Prices on this show are powered by our sponsor, TCG Player. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date in the latest Commander's Quarters episodes. Today's Commander is going to be the Scorpion God. The Scorpion God is a 6-5 God that costs 3 black red. It has whenever a creature with a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it dies, draw a card. Pay 1 black red, put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on another target creature. And when the Scorpion God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. With the right deck built around it, the Scorpion God is a value engine. If we're able to get minus one, minus one counters on not just our opponent's creatures, but even our own, we're going to be drawing a ton of cards. On top of that, the Scorpion God is very resilient. Even if it does die, it's going to come right back to our hand at the beginning of the next end step. This helps us avoid paying the commander tax and helps us use our mana elsewhere. So what's our strategy with this deck? Well, we want to distribute a ton of minus one, minus one counters and draw a lot of cards from those creatures dying. Now again, it doesn't matter if it's our opponent's creature or one of our creatures, even if it's a Scorpion God, we get to draw a card if they have a minus one, minus one counter on them when they die. And how do we win with this deck? Well, we're going to overwhelm our opponents after we decimate their board, or we can kill them with Infect. This deck comes with a lot of ways of taking out our opponent's creatures very quickly. And by taking out their creatures, and even some of our creatures, we get further and further ahead of them by the number of cards that we're drawing. And since Infect is already a great way to get counters on creatures, it's also one of our win conditions. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to break this deck down into 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how you're going to win with it. First up is tactic number one, count the rocks. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bobble, which we can pay two to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Then we're running three mana dorks that are going to help us out. There's Ledimir, which taps for black, Iron Mirror, which taps for red, and Plague Mirror, which taps for colorless. On top of that, Plague Mirror has Infect, so it can help us out with our strategy for this deck. Then there's Mindstone, which can either tap for a colorless, or we can pay 1 to tap and sacrifice it to draw a card. And next up there's Charcoal Diamond, which enters the battlefield tapped, but it taps for a black when it untaps. Then there's Sphere of the Suns, which enters the battlefield tapped, and we can tap it 3 times to add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool. Next up is Star Compass, which also enters the battlefield tapped, and it can tap for either of our colors depending on our land situation. Next up is Rakdos Signet, which we can pay 1 to tap it to add black red to our mana pool. And finally we've got Unstable Obelisk, which is more expensive than our other mana rocks in this deck. It does cost 3 and only taps for a colorless, but we can pay 7 to tap it and sacrifice it to destroy target permanent. Rakdos isn't very good at dealing with some types of permanents, so this card can come in huge. Alright, so now that we've talked about ramping, let's talk about getting some minus 1 minus 1 counters on some creatures. It's time to go on to tactic number 2, target locked. First up there's serrated arrows, which enters the battlefield with 3 arrowhead counters on it. By tapping it and removing an arrowhead counter from it, we can put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on target creature. And then there's Contagion Class, which when it enters the battlefield, we put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. On top of that, we can pay four to tap it to proliferate. By doing that, we get to choose any number of permanents and or players with a counter on them, and then give each another counter of any kind that they already have. This is a great way for us to decimate our opponent's boards by either shrinking their creatures or by taking them out completely. Next up is Cartouche of Ambition, which is going to give one of our creatures plus one, plus one, and lifelink, but when we cast it, we get to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Lethal Sting's actually going to put a minus one, minus one counter on one of our creatures, but we get to destroy a creature in exchange for that. And then there's Retribution, which will let us choose two creatures in opponent controls. They have to choose which one to sacrifice and which one to put a minus one, minus one counter on. Next up is Splendid Agony, which will let us distribute two minus one, minus one counters among one or two creatures. And then there's Torment of Venom, which is going to let us put three minus one, minus one counters on target creature, and then its controller is going to lose three life unless they sacrifice another non-land permanent or if they discard a card. And finally, there's Incremental Blight, which will let us target three creatures. The first is going to get one minus one, minus one counter, the second will get two of them, and the third is going to get three of them. This is just a great way of really hurting some of our opponent's creatures while also benefiting ourselves. So we've talked about some spells that put some counters on creatures, but what about some creatures that do it themselves? Let's go through them now in tactic number three, Deathbringers. First up, there's Fume Spitter, which we can sacrifice to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Festering Mummy can do the same, except we can't sacrifice it and the trigger happens when it dies. And then Bane Whip Punisher is going to put that counter on a creature when it comes into play. On top of that, we can pay a black to sacrifice it to destroy any target creature that has a minus one, minus one counter on it. Then there's Serrated by Skellion, which does double duty for this deck. When we tap it, we get to put a minus one, minus one counter on it and another target creature. So not only do we get to draw a card when that creature dies, but when Serrated by Skellion dies too. Next up is Soul Stinger, which can also give us multiple card draws. When it enters the battlefield, we have to put two minus one, minus one counters on one of our creatures. And then when Soul Stinger dies, we can put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature for each minus one, minus one counter that's on Soul Stinger. 
So if we want to, we can intentionally build up the counters on Soul Stinger to make it die. Because not only do we get to draw a card, but we can also put those 5 minus 1 minus 1 counters on one of our opponent's creatures. Then there's Skin Render, which just straight up puts 3 minus 1 minus 1 counters on target creature when it enters the battlefield. And then when Shambling Swarm dies, we get to distribute 3 minus 1 minus 1 counters among 1, 2, or 3 target creatures. But then, at the beginning of the next end step, we have to remove those counters. So we've talked about putting some counters on a few target creatures, but how about putting some counters on all of them? Let's go through some ways to do that now in tactic number 4, count them all. First up there's Soul Snuffers, which when it enters the battlefield, we put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on all creatures. This not only can be devastating against decks with a ton of small creatures like token decks, but it also is going to draw us a ton of cards. And then there's Midnight Banshee, which might be even more effective at doing this. It has, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on each non-black creature. The vast majority of our creatures are black, so they're going to dodge this effect, but our opponent's creatures for the most part aren't going to. So with just a few turns with this card in play, it can decimate our opponent's boards. On top of that, it has Wither, which means that it's going to deal damage to creatures in the form of minus one, minus one counters. Next up is Carnifax Demon, which is another fantastic card in this deck. It's a 6-6 with flying, but it enters the battlefield with two minus one, minus one counters on it. By paying just a black, though, we can remove one of those counters and put a minus one, minus one counter on each other creature. This can get out of control very quickly, and most of the time we can wipe the board with this guy if we really want to. Because all we have to do is build up the number of minus one, minus one counters on Carnifax Demon, and then distribute those among all other creatures. Then there's Liliana's Influence, which is a sorcery which will let us put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature that we don't control. It does have a second effect where we can search our library for Liliana Death Wielder, but unfortunately that's going to have to be a reasonable upgrade for this deck if you want to add it in. And finally, there's Archfiend of Ifnir. It has whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponents control. With all the cards that we're going to be drawing from creatures dying, we're going to have plenty of cards to discard at the end of our turn. And with this card in play, it's just going to draw us more and more cards by killing off our opponents' creatures. So we've already seen a card with Wither like Midnight Banshee, but there are plenty more in this deck. Let's go through them now in tactic number five, Wither Away. First up, there's Sickle Ripper and Smoldering Butcher. Both are just straight up creatures that have Wither. Lockjaw Snapper also has Wither, but it also has a Death Trigger. When it's put into a graveyard from play, we put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature that already has a minus one, minus one counter on it. And next up, there's Puncture Blast, which is an instant that has Wither. It's going to deal three damage to target creature or player. So if one of our opponents is very low, we can finish them off with this spell, or we can put three minus one, minus one counters on any creature on the battlefield. Then there's Corrosive Mentor, which comes in huge for this deck. It's a 1-3 that's going to give all black creatures we control Wither. So not only is this going to give all the black creatures that we've talked about so far Wither, but it's also going to give our Commander Wither. And Wither's just a fantastic way of getting more and more minus one, minus one counters on our opponent's creatures. And finally, there's Everlasting Torment, which does this in an even better way. It's an enchantment that says, players can't gain life, damage can't be prevented, and all damage is dealt as though its source had Wither. So now when any creatures deal damage to each other, each of them are going to get minus one, minus one counters. This even affects our opponents when they're attacking and blocking each other. This card just gives us so much value because more and more creatures will be getting those counters and dying and drawing us more and more cards. But Wither isn't the only way to do this. Let's go through another way in tactic number 6, Patient Zero. Phyrexian Digester, Contagious Nim, and Razor Swine each have Infect. Like Wither, a creature with Infect is going to deal damage in the form of minus 1, minus 1 counters to other creatures. But they also deal damage to players in the form of poison counters. It only takes 10 poison counters to kill a player, even in Commander. So even though these creatures are small and only have 2 power, if they hit an opponent, that's basically one-fifth of their life. And next up we've got a couple of infect creatures that can actually get bigger. Septic Rats is a 2-2, but if it's attacking someone that's already poisoned, it's a 3-3. And then there's Flesh Eater Imp, which is a 2-2 with flying and infect, but we can sacrifice a creature to give it plus 1 plus 1 until the end of the turn. Then there's Icor Rants, which when it comes into play, everyone's going to get a poison counter. Then there's Reaper of Shieldry, which is only 2-5 with Infect, but whenever it's dealt damage, that source's controller is going to get a poison counter. Next up is Fallen Pharaomancer, which is only a 1-1 with Infect, but we can pay 1 in a red to tap it to deal 1 damage to target creature or player. And then there's Core Prowler, which is a 2-2 with Infect, but whenever it dies, we get to proliferate. Again, by doing so, we can add another counter to creatures or players that already have one. And this includes poison counters. Next up is Corpse Curve, which is just a 2-2 with Infect, but when it enters the battlefield, we can return target creature card with Infect from our graveyard to our hand. And finally, we've got some bigger creatures that have Infect. Brexian Vet Mother is a 4-5 with Infect, by the beginning of our upkeep, we get a Poison Counter. Then there's Toxic Nim, which is a 4-1 with Infect, but we can regenerate it for just a black. And finally, there's Phyrexian Juggernaut, which is a 5-5 with Infect, but it has to attack each turn if able. 
So combat damage is definitely a great way to spread infect and wither damage, but there's also some other ways that we can do that too. Let's go through those ways now in tactic number 7, the infection spreads. First up there's Warstorm Surge, which is an enchantment that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. This card works amazing with infect and wither. If one of our creatures enters the battlefield with either infect or wither, they can deal damage equal to their power to any creature in the form of minus one minus one counters. And an infect creature can just straight up give one of our opponents poison counters when they enter the battlefield. Next up there's Lightning Volley, which works great with creatures that we already have in play. Lightning Volley is going to give all creatures we control the ability to tap to deal one damage to target creature or player. So again, our creatures with Infect and Wither can come in huge with this card. But a card that works even better with our Infect and Wither creatures is our Golden Pig of the deck. Just a reminder, the Golden Pig is the number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Fury Stoke Giant. Fury Stoke Giant is a 3-3 Giant Warrior that costs 3 red red. It has, when it comes into play, other creatures that we control are going to gain tap. This creature deals 2 damage to target creature or player until the end of the turn. On top of that, it has Persist, so it can come back into play when it dies, as long as it doesn't have a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it. This card is absolutely insane with our Wither creatures and with our Infect creatures that are in play. It's basically going to give them all the ability to tap to put 2 minus 1 minus 1 counters on any creature. And with the Infect creatures especially, it can be a death sentence for some of our opponents because it basically gives all of our infect creatures the ability to tap to give someone two poison counters. With just a few infect creatures out, this can easily finish off at least one of our opponents. Especially since if Fury Stoke Giant ever dies and it doesn't have a minus one minus one counter on it, it just comes back and we can do it all over again. This card not only comes in huge for our strategy, but it also helps us win the game in a lot of situations. And that's how it earned the title of the Golden Pig of the deck. Finally, there's Chandra's Ignition, which is going to make target creature we control deal damage equal to its power to each other creature and each opponent. This card works especially well when it targets one of our creatures with either Wither or Infect. And in combination with one other card in this deck, it can even win us the game on the spot. But we'll get to that card here in a bit. For now, let's go through some more cards that help us proliferate. Let's do that in tactic number 8, Counting Counters. First up, there's Grim Affliction, which not only lets us put a minus one minus one counter on target creature, but then it also lets us proliferate. Again, proliferating comes in huge for this deck by helping us add more and more minus one minus one counters to our opponent's creatures and give our opponents more and more poison counters. Next up, there's Volt Charge, which is going to deal three damage to target creature or player, and then we get to proliferate. On top of proliferating, this card comes in huge by helping us finish off either an opponent or a creature that's really low. And finally, there's Spread the Sickness, which is going to let us destroy a target creature, and then we proliferate. Proliferating is just very effective with this deck. It's especially effective in combination with these next cards that are coming up. Let's go over them now in tactic number 9, A Tough Life. First up there's Sorceress Queen, which comes in huge for this deck. We can tap her to make target creature other than her have a base power and toughness of 0-2 until the end of the turn. With all the minus 1 minus 1 counters that we'll be spreading around and proliferating, we can just straight up kill creatures with her ability. If any creature has 2 minus 1 minus 1 counters on it, they might as well be dead with this card in play. And finally, there's Sudden Spoiling, which takes it up to a whole new level. Sudden Spoiling is an instant that has split second. It says, until the end of the turn, creatures target player controls lose all abilities and have a base power and toughness of 0-2. So again, all of that opponent's creatures that have 2-1-1-1 minus one, minus one counters on them are pretty much just dead. And we can even just use this as a combat trick when we're attacking or blocking to decimate our opponent's board. And since this card has split second, our opponents really can't do anything about it. Sudden Spoiling is a very flexible card that can help us in a variety of different ways. Let's go through some other cards that help us in some different ways in tactic number 10, different approaches. First up there's Glistening Oil, which is going to give Enchanted Creature Infect. But at the beginning of our upkeep, we put a minus one minus one counter on it. And then when it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we return it back to our hand. So we can either use this on one of our big creatures like the Scarab God to make it into a huge threat. Or we can use it on our opponent's smaller creatures to take them out. Then there's Blackblade Reforge, which is an equipment that's going to give equipped creature plus one plus one for each land that we control. This card is incredible when we attach it to a creature with Wither, and especially with Infect. In fact, this is the card that we were referring to when we were talking about Chandra's Ignition killing everyone in one turn. By equipping this to one of our creatures with Infect, if they have more than 10 power and we cast Chandra's Ignition targeting them, they're going to give each of our opponents 10 poison counters. Now again, we need Chandra's Ignition to make this actually work, but it's actually really good even without it. Next up is Nest of Scarabs, which comes in huge for this deck. It's an enchantment that says whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, create that many 1-1 one, one black insects. We are going to be getting a ton of insects off of this card. On top of that, if we ever need to draw a card, we can just kill one of our insects with a minus one minus one counter to create another one. This card works especially well with something like Carnifax Demon that can just put a minus one minus one counter on each of our creatures. And finally, there's Chaos Warp, which is a great response to pretty much any permanent on the board. It's going to make the owner of target permanent shuffle it into their library and then reveal the top card of their library, and if it's a permanent card, they get to put that onto the battlefield. 
Again, there's some things that Rakdos is just not good at dealing with, and Chaos Warp is a good way to do that. This deck is a ton of fun and provides so much value while decimating our opponent's boards. But now that we've gone through the cards that help us win with this deck, let's go through the cards that help make it happen. It's time to go on to the mana base. We're going to be running 36 lands in this deck, including Grasping Dunes. We can tap Grasping Dunes for a colorless, or we can pay 1 to tap and sacrifice it to put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on target creature. Then there's Urborg Volcano, Rakdos Guildgate, Cinder Barrens, Bloodfell Caves, and Aquum Refuge, each of which enter the battlefield tapped and can tap for either a black or a red. On top of that, Bloodfell Caves and Aquum Refuge will gain us life when they come into play. Next up is Rakdos Carnarium, which is going to enter the battlefield tapped and we get the return of land back to our hand. But it does have the upside of tapping for black red. Then there's Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap to sacrifice to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. Next up is Rocky Tar Pit, which will enter the battlefield tapped, but we can tap to sacrifice it to search our library for a basic land and put into play untapped. Jund and Grixis Panorama both can tap for a colorless, and we can also pay one to tap and sacrifice them to search our library for either of our basic lands. Then there's Warp Landscape and Terminal Moraine, both of which can tap for a colorless, or we can pay two to tap and sacrifice them to search our library for a basic land and put into play tapped. And finally, we're going to be running 22 basic lands, including 16 swamps and 6 mountains. Now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that deck costs on this show are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Scorpion God EDH rec deck is going to set you back $147.87, so let's see how we compare to that. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at just $24.93. All Commander's Quarters decks are built to be tuned and focused within that $25 budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. Let's go through some reasonable upgrades to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, there's Black Sun Zenith, coming in at $3.94. It's a sorcery that costs X Black Black, and it says, put X minus 1 minus 1 counters on each creature, shuffle Black Sun Zenith into its owner's library. This is a great way for us to kill a lot of creatures and draw a lot of cards with this deck. Next up, there's Contagion Engine, which is going to cost you $7.20. It's an artifact that costs 6, and when it enters the battlefield, we're going to put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on each creature target player controls. And then if we pay 4 and tap it, we can proliferate and then proliferate again. So first off, this can help us decimate one of our opponent's boards. But proliferating twice can just destroy everyone. And then there's Blowfly Infestation, which comes in at $2.47. Blowfly Infestation is an enchantment that costs 2 and a black. It says whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, if it had a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it, put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on target creature. This card is incredible in this deck, and if you can fit it into your budget, I would make sure that you add this in. Speaking of amazing cards, next up is Crumbling Ashes, which comes in at $4.62. It's an enchantment that costs 1 and a black, and it says at the beginning of your upkeep, destroy target creature with a minus 1 minus 1 counter on it. This card provides us with a ton of value and makes all of our minus 1 minus 1 counters into death sentences. Next up is Necro Skitter, which is going to cost you $3.22. It's a 1-4 elemental with Wither that costs 1 black black. It has whenever a creature an opponent controls with a minus one minus one counter on it dies, you may return that card to the battlefield under your control. This card provides us with a ton of value and gives us our opponent's creatures when they die as long as we can get a minus one minus one counter onto them. And finally there's Colrath Knight which comes in at $2.99. It's a 3-3 with flying and wither and it costs 3 Rakdos Rakdos. It has creatures your opponents control with counters on them can't attack or block. This card is incredible with this deck and it pretty much makes our opponent's creatures useless as soon as we get counters on them. And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really just want to hear about what you guys think about this deck, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. When you're buying decks like this one, or just individual cards, make sure you use that deck list link in the description below. Because not only will you get great prices on TCG Player, but you're also going to be supporting this show because they sponsor us. And make sure you follow us on social media so that you can get some early hints on who the next commander just might be. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tacks. There's even a general tier where you get your own personalized deck tack dedicated to you. If you enjoyed this deck tack, please like it and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out our other deck tacks, commander excluded episodes, and super budget episodes too. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.